I now have to ask you to forget all you know about VORs and relearn them from scratch. Trust me, once you start using the PTS method, you will be glad you did. Instead of looking at a VOR like an obsolete weird instrument with a needle and a two from indicator with things such as reverse sensing, let's look at it the way it was meant to be looked at. What if I told you that I am able to determine my approximate heading to a VOR station by just glancing at it for a second? What if I told you that by the end of this slide you'll be able to do the same? For example, by looking at this VOR here, I can immediately tell you that I am southwest of the station and the direction of northeast, so a heading of around 045, would bring me towards it if not directly to it. No need to center the needle with a from to find my direction from the station, or maybe a to, then making sure I fly the same direction, or otherwise we have reverse sensing, all along keeping in mind that purple elephants poop bananas while they fly. Ah, right. I can assure you that what I do is done in under one second. All I do is look at the quadrant the flag and needle point to. In this case here, the upper right quadrant. Any heading in that quadrant will bring me towards the station, and if I'm not real close to it, I'll use the heading shown by the marker of that quadrant. In this case, again, a 045 heading. Most newer VOR instruments have these four markers which point to a 45 degree angle of intercept to the selected radial. In general, if you aren't extremely close to a VOR, let's say that you're more than 5 miles from it as a reference, a 45 degree angle of intercept is an optimal angle and would also work with substantial crosswinds. So for the most part, you can plan on using them as references to intercept radials and bearings thus making your life easier. But let's try a different VOR. This one is telling me to head northwest. I am southeast of it. So a heading of 315 would be my choice. Again, shown by the indicator on the bottom left quadrant. On this other one here, I would choose a heading of 170, as it is approximately south of me. So let's break this down and help you understand how this works. I will now explain the logic behind this method first, and then simplify it. A VOR will generally give you two kernel directions for you to fly to get to it. One is indicated by what you call the two from flag. We at Pilot Training Solutions just call it a flag and eliminate the two from and therefore reverse sensing concept. The other direction is shown by the needle. Think about it, you do the same. If you're trying to explain to me how to get to New York from Dallas, uh, well, dude, just fly north, northeast, for quite a while. So, for example, looking at this VOR, the first thing I do is look at the flag and see whether it points up or down. In this case, it points up. This means that one of those two cardinal directions telling me how to get to it is located on the top of the VOR, which in turn, eliminates the bottom of it. If I look straight up on the VOR, I can see north right smack in the middle. This is one of those two cardinal directions for me to fly. Now I simply do the same with the needle. Since it's pointing to the left, I can now also eliminate the right side of the VOR and again, looking straight across to the left, I see west. That is the second cardinal direction required to get to the station. To fly to the station, I would head northwest. Also, if I am more than 5 miles from the VOR, I would choose the heading indicated by the marker between north and west, in this case, 315. Here's another VOR. To find the cardinal direction indicated by the flag, I go perpendicular from the center of the VOR in the direction the flag is, in this case, down. I find the closest cardinal direction from the center of the VOR in this case east, right in the middle of the bottom, and to find the direction from the needle, I proceed horizontal from the center of the OR towards the same side as the needle, in this case again left. I find the closest cardinal direction from there, and as you can see, here it's pointing straight to south, so go southeast. And why not? I again use the marker found in that quadrant and fly a heading of 135. Now, let's speed this up. Here's another VOR. Flag points down, so the headings on the top of the VOR, 
disappear. The whole top of the VOR can disappear. Neil points left, so the headings on the right side of the VOR disappear. The quadrant I am left with represents the headings that will bring me closer to the VOR. Find the marker on that quadrant and fly that. In this case, a heading of 120. One last one, and then it's your turn. Flag down. Top goes away. Needle right. Left goes away. Bottom right quadrant has our heading. The marker points to the south. Let's fly 180 to the station, as it is south of us. Now, let's see if you can tell me the heading for a 45 degree intercept to this station. With the answers being 250, 340, 160, and 70.